Numerical integration relies on taking your function of interest and dividing it into pieces. For a function of one independent variable, these pieces are one-dimensional strips along a single axis. For a function of two independent variables, these pieces are two-dimensional squares and we have to move along two axes. Again, we have a choice of method to use. If we use the midpoint rule, we evaluate the function at the middle of each square. If we use the trapezoidal rule, we evaluate the function at each corner of the square and average the values. And of course, we can combine these two methods in Simpson's rule. In this code, which is available in a link in the description below, we've implemented the midpoint rule in two dimensions. Notice that since we have two variables to integrate over, we need to set up two loops, one inside the other. This means that we keep x constant until we've completed looping over all the y values. Then we increment x by one step and restart the loop over the y values. This means that integration over two variables takes much longer than integration over one variable. In this code, we've implemented the trapezoidal rule. Again, we have one loop inside another, and this time we need to evaluate the function at the four corners of each square. Finally, we can combine the two methods in Simpson's rule, giving us the most accurate answer. Of course, our region of integration need not be square. Suppose we wanted to integrate our function over a circular region. We can implement this different geometry by making the bounds of the interior loops variable depend on the value of the outer loops variable. Here, for example, we have x vary from negative 1 to 1, while the bounds for y are given by the equation for a circle, making the bounds for y different each time we loop over x. The answer we get is fairly accurate, and as promised, it took a fair chunk of time to arrive at this result. Integrating over more than two independent variables just requires us to wrap additional loops. You should now be able to use the midpoint rule, the trapezoidal rule, and Simpson's rule to calculate the integral of a given function of two variables over a given two-dimensional region. Use the codes in the links in the description below to evaluate the following integrals. Next time, we'll take a look at how we can extend these techniques to evaluate improper integrals which have one or more infinite bounds.